So I'm going to just turn to a couple of scriptures quick and, and answer the question, why, why do we do a, a baby dedication as opposed to an uh, infant baptism? Uh, so I'm going to go to Luke chapter 2 and Luke chapter 3. Uh, I'm actually going to be preaching three sermons today. Well, I didn't preach the past two weeks, and then you got this week, so that's three sermons um, that I've got to do. This will be one of them, and then I got two 15-minute messages later, uh, 15 minutes each. So we'll try to get through this quickly. Yeah, just 15 each, you know, so it still averages out to 40, 45 minutes of, of preaching. So... <laughs> So put your seat belts on. Do we got seat belts in those pews? <laughs> Make sure that gets in the updates for when we do the sanctuary updates. Seat belts for the pews, okay? Make sure they're harnesses too, you know. <laughs> so Luke chapter 2, and then we're going to look at Luke chapter 3. Just a couple verses here. This is in reference to, uh, to Jesus uh, after his birth. Uh, now in the days of her perf. <clears throat> Her purification, that's Mary, of course, according to the law of Moses, were completed. They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And the word holy there means to be set apart or to be dedicated. Set apart or dedicated. And then in Luke chapter 3... Uh, verses 21 through 23, now at this time Jesus is already an, an adult. And it says here, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, uh, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, you are my beloved son and you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph. And then it goes on to list uh, the genealogy here. So we see in Luke chapter 2 that Jesus was dedicated as an infant by his uh, mother and father in the temple. And then as an adult, later at the age of 30 years of age, he was baptized in the River Jordan by John the Baptist. And this sets a precedence for us as we follow Christ that, uh, that as an infant or as a child uh, that has no will, uh, no ability to decide, to believe, to repent, to, to make a decision for Christ, uh, that has no ability to do those things, that the only thing that one can do is to, as a parent with parental authority, is to make a dedication of that child to the Lord. Because you, as the parents who are in a position of authority over that child and given a stewardship over their life, over their soul to raise them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. All you can do is your part to bring them before the Lord through the eldership of the church and say, I present them to the Lord and I dedicate them, I set them apart uh, to the Lord. Lord, let your will be done in them. Let your will be done through them. Uh, I'm not trying to live my dreams through my children. I'm not trying to live my life through them or what I want them to do. Lord, I'm dedicating them to you. They are yours. And we see that not only was Jesus uh, dedicated to the Lord in the temple, but this was apparently a pattern that was followed because it was written in the law of Moses that this should be done. So how many children do you think were born over 1,500 years in Israel? So for 1,500 years, people were practicing this practice of dedication of children to the Lord. Uh, one of the most memorable, of course, is... Uh, Hannah, who dedicated her son Samuel to the Lord in 1 Samuel chapter 1. And of course, who did he become? A prophet, right? Uh, one of the major prophets. And uh, so he turned out okay. Now, we're not promising why it's going to turn out a prophet, but you never know. He could be an evangelist or something like that. We don't know. But the point is, uh, the reason why we don't baptize infants or babies is because, really, of the teachings of Christ and the practice of Christ. All you have to do, and, and this, this is really how simple it is. I mean, people make it more complicated than it is. There's tons of theological arguments. 
But it's this simple. What did Jesus say? What, what did Jesus command? And when it comes to the subject of baptism, this is what Jesus said. He said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, who's the them that he's baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? The them are the disciples that are made from all the nations. So it's disciples that are being baptized. And he says, um, teaching them, the them is the same them that were baptized, the disciples from all the nations. Teaching them, these disciples that were baptized, to observe all things that the Lord has commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. In other words, a person that is baptized, it is their first public act of obedience after the point of faith, after faith has already come in their heart, and they are fully capable of being taught and observing everything that the Lord commands. Now, would you be able to say that of an infant? Is an infant be able to make a public uh, obedience after the point of faith, meaning they, they actually believe and are able to articulate a confession of faith, and they're, they're doing this and they're able to be taught and to observe, actually do everything Christ commanded? And of course, the answer to that is no. Uh, they cannot. And so that's why we believe that in this church, uh, what we would say more biblical practice would be to have parents who have authority over, in this case, Wyatt, and say, Lord, uh, I, I dedicate this son that we have, that you gave us. You gave us this son. He's yours. And, and, and we, we don't want to just raise him up to, to satisfy our will and our longing and what we want, but Lord, we want your will for Wyatt's life. And we as a church body, we want God's will for Wyatt's life. Whatever that is, if he's going to be a construction worker, a carpenter, a doctor, uh, hopefully not a lawyer. Uh, no offense. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> Right? A preacher, a missionary, uh, whatever it is that he is called to do in life, that's what we want for him. We want his, God's will for his life. But again, uh, Wyatt doesn't have a will. He doesn't have the ability to repent, believe, confess. He doesn't have the ability to be taught and observe all things the Lord commanded us. He can't do it. So all we can do is those who are in a position of authority over him as parents and then as church authority, as elders, all we can do is present him to the Lord and say, Lord, we commit him to you. Let your will be done and help us in raising him the way that you would have us to raise him. Amen.